we're very optimistic. I, I hope that the other leaders came out here and told you the same. We believe that we can get to agreement on these issues and prevent a government shutdown. And that's our first uh, responsibility. We made it so clear that we can't have the shutdown because it hurts so many people in so many different ways, even for a short period of time, was very apparent in the room. And the speaker did not reject that. So it sounds like both Democrats and Republicans agree that we shouldn't have a partial government shutdown this Friday. But will we have one? That's unknown. What I can tell you is things went downhill from here. My purpose was to express what I believe is the obvious truth. And that is that we must take care of America's needs first. When you talk about America's needs, you have to talk first about our open border. We made it very clear to him that we want to do something real on border. And in fact, we Democrats in the Senate supported a border bill, but said to hold up Ukraine, which as he admitted was a national imperative, because you can't do something else which we all should work on, was a non sequitur. There was no logic. You're going to hear much more from all of these people about the border issues and Ukraine funding in a second. But first, why are they all talking today? because the president held what's being called a passionate and intense meeting in the Oval Office this afternoon with the vice president, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, House Speaker Mike Johnson, and House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries to discuss several critical issues. The Democrat leaders and the House Speaker spoke to reporters after the meeting. McConnell did not. Obviously, the looming partial government shutdown this Friday is a priority, so people don't lose their paychecks or lose access to critical government services. That leaves only three days to pass some kind of legislation to keep the government open, and the thing is, the House doesn't even come back to work in Washington, D.C. until tomorrow. So really, there's only two days to get something done. And I'm cautiously optimistic uh, that we can do what is necessary within the next day or so to close down these bills and avoid a government shutdown. If they don't seem worried, okay, we'll just go with that and hope the government doesn't shut down, I guess. But what was very obvious based on what Schumer and Johnson said after the meeting is that the government shutdown wasn't really the focus of what happened in the Oval Office. There were some heated words in the Oval Office, mostly about getting military aid to Ukraine, especially after the Senate passed that overwhelmingly bipartisan bill that included not only aid for Ukraine, but aid for Israel and Taiwan. But despite overwhelming bipartisan support in the House, too, for the same bill, Johnson refuses to put it on the House floor for a vote. We said to the speaker, get it done. I told him this is one of the moments I said I've been around here a long time. It's maybe four or five times that history is looking over your shoulder. And if you don't do the right thing, whatever the immediate politics are, you will regret it. Johnson was noncommittal on that because he has something else on his mind. And uh, I was very clear with the president and all those in the room that the House is actively uh, pursuing and uh, investigating all the various options on that, and we will address that in a timely manner. But again, the first priority of the country is our border and making sure it's secure. We can't tarry or the war could be lost. And second, we, had to, we wanted to do border and have a tough, secure border plan, as we showed, we Democrats showed in the Senate, but he can't say it won't do Ukraine until we get border. He's tried to do border for six months and couldn't come up with a single Democratic vote. Now, the fact is, to get anything done in divided government, there has to be buy-in from Democrats and Republicans. A Republican priority border bill like H.R. 2, the one that passed the House a few months ago, will never fly because there's nothing in it for Democrats to vote for. But in a bipartisan bill that has both Democrat and Republican priorities in it, that deal would likely pass. And that very deal was cut by Democrats, a very conservative Republican, and independents in the Senate. But that deal failed after former President Trump on the campaign trail shut it down. So now the House Speaker is suggesting the president should deal with the border on his own. I, I believe the president can take executive authority right now today to change that. And I told him that again today in person, as, as I've said to him many times, publicly and privately over the last several weeks. It's time for action. It is a catastrophe and it must stop. It's a position that the Democrats say is not only bogus, but even if it did happen, it shouldn't prevent them from also taking up the bipartisan Ukraine aid bill. I think Biden won that argument because he said, you can't do it, we all said, without personnel. And you need legislation for personnel. And even the Republicans in the budget asked for more money 
for personnel at the border. So it was clear, it was clear that we want a fixed border, but it was also clear the speaker did not make, didn't give a reason why you had to do one before you did the other.